Oh my gosh, inside this box is the super rare close-up of the three bears puzzle. Where do I open it from? I don't want to damage the puzzle. Oh my gosh, oh my god, it's in here. Oh my god, it's so beautiful. It's so beautiful. Ooh, there are all of the pieces. Okay, I'm sure you are all wondering, why have I lately been making such a big deal about this vintage solid brown puzzle? So let's rewind. I'm gonna tell you the entire story of how I got my hands on this. Um, oh my gosh, I just realized something. I'm, I, oh my God, wait, this is different than what I thought it was. Um, <laughs> okay, I will, oh, wait. Um, okay, I'll explain it all in a minute. Let me go back to my script. Let me go back to the order that I was going to talk about everything, but wait, oh, this, this is even better than I thought it was. <laughs> Okay, just wait. So, okay, we are jumping back in time to 1964. The puzzle company Springbok had just been formed the previous year by Catherine Lewin. And there is this great New York Times article that basically gives a brief history of the company and also explains how they decided to partner up with the New York City restaurant Serendipity 3 to release some exclusive designs. Now, this is the 60s, pop art was all the rage, and Catherine wanted to do something a little different. So they released what I think are probably the first example of solid colored puzzles. If not the first, at least like very, very early on. So they released an all red puzzle called Little Red Riding Hood's Hood, an all white puzzle called Snow White Without the Seven Dwarves, and an all brown puzzle called Close Up of the Three Bears. So all of these puzzles were released a couple different times. Um, all of the different versions are archived on the website Springbok Fever. The official serendipity versions of these puzzles are incredibly, incredibly rare. If you have one, like don't just throw it up on eBay. Please get in touch so we can like talk to collectors about it. Like. Th those are something really special. Anyway, I went through all of the different versions of these puzzles in my solid colored puzzles video from last year. So you can go check that out if you want the full breakdown. And so when I've been talking about these recently, I've had people asking like, why are these so special? Why are they so collectible? And it's because they're so unique. Like. Back in the 60s, nobody was really doing these solid colored puzzles. These are highly collectible for vintage puzzle collectors. Plus the fact that there are so many rare different versions of them. So, okay, that brings us to modern times. <laughs> um, about a month ago, a copy of this puzzle showed up on eBay, which I, of course, knew about immediately because I have an eBay alert set up. I knew that it was gonna go for a lot of money. So I made a TikTok uh, following the auction. So a really exciting puzzle showed up on eBay the other day. This is Close Up of the Three Bears. It's a solid brown puzzle. These are super rare. A week ago, the bidding started at $100 and now it's up to 
$405 and we still have 42 minutes to go. 20 minutes left and we just hit 455. I'm literally just sitting here working on a puzzle while I keep an eye on it. Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, it's up to 510. Oh man, oh my god, three minutes left. I just saw 530 and then it just ticked up to 550. Under a minute. I haven't even bid and this is legitimately so stressful. I don't think I could even like click enough buttons to put in a bid myself at this point. <laughs> oh my god. What? What? Oh my god. Oh my god. I th Whoa. What? So yes, that one went for over a thousand dollars, which is way more than I expected. But then the person who bought that puzzle got in touch with me. Oh my gosh, I found out who bought the puzzle. Oh my god, what? What? Oh my god. So the person who bought it got in touch with me and I can confirm that it is a puzzle collector. It is not just an eBay reseller. It's actually someone that I've met before and I'm just so relieved that it went to someone who will actually appreciate it for what it is and not someone who's just gonna sell it to make a profit. So I'm not gonna tell you this person's name because they don't have a huge social media presence, so it wouldn't mean anything to all of you. Also, they invited me over to check out their puzzle collection, so <laughs> I might have to take them up on that. So they told me the reason why they spent so much money, why they had such a high budget, is because that copy of the puzzle was a first printing. And the way that you can tell is by whether this graphic on the front is printed onto the box or if it's a sticker that's stuck on. If it is a sticker, then it is the first printing. If it's printed on, then it's the second printing. And the first printings are, seem to be more rare than the second printings. So, okay, that, that auction comes and goes. I'm like, it's fine. I'll get one eventually. I'm not gonna spend a thousand dollars on one puzzle. But then I get an email from two sisters who uh, again asked me not to use their names. They had bought a copy of Close Up of the Three Bears at an estate sale and didn't know how rare it was until they saw my videos. So they were basically asking for advice about whether they should put it up on eBay, like how much it might be worth. So I consulted with this Springbok collector. Um, this person let me know that they didn't need a second copy of the puzzle. So if this did go up on eBay, they would not be bidding. So the price probably wouldn't jump quite as high. They also advised that there's a little bit of damage to this box. Um, it's not in like totally perfect condition. Some of the pieces have a little bit of residue on them. And then, okay, this, this is what I just noticed before. And I like don't know what to do. Um, from the pictures, it looked like this, uh, this label was printed on, so me and this collector both assumed this was a second printing of this puzzle, but now that I have it in front of me and I can touch it, it is a sticker. Th this is a first edition copy of this puzzle. Um, okay, hang on, back to the story. <laughs> So basically I passed along sort of all, all that information to the sisters. I was like, if you wanna put it up on eBay, that is totally fine. Like I'll probably be bidding, this other collector won't be bidding, but who knows who else is out there that might be bidding. Like you just never know. But I was also like, it is entirely your decision. Like I'm not trying to sway you one way or the other, but if we just agreed on a price, we could, just do a private sale and then you wouldn't have to deal with eBay and an auction and eBay taking their cut and like dealing with strangers. And the whole thing would just be like wrapped up much more quickly. Um, you know, it's a gamble because who knows what it would get on eBay. It might go for more or less than what I'm offering. And they were so kind and they agreed to just sell it directly to me. 
But the, the price we agreed on was with me under the impression that this was a second printing of this puzzle. And now that I know it's a first printing, like I'm not out here trying to scam anyone. I really want to make sure I'm passing along all the information that I genuinely believe is true. And now that I see that it is a different product than what I thought it was when we made the deal, I'm just going to send them some extra money. <laughs> And like, <laughs> I literally feel like my dad with his Anvil collection now, like obviously he buys stuff on eBay and goes to auctions all the time, but he also makes private deals all the time. You know, that's the benefit of putting yourself out there as the expert is that when people come to you looking for advice, you get first dibs on if they have really good stuff. <laughs> so my collection is not perfect. Um, my copy of Little Red Riding Hood's Hood is the 1970 version, which is the most common of all of them. It's also missing one or two pieces, I believe. And then my copy of Snow White is actually the first printing again, because it has the sticker on the top. However, the box is very dirty. And also someone drew on the puzzle with a pen, I guess, to make it easier to solve the second time around. But I honestly like don't really care about those imperfections. All that matters to me is having these puzzles in front of me to be able to show you guys in these videos and just to like have for my growing solid colored and vintage puzzle collection. So that's basically the story. Um, I am not the person who bid a thousand dollars on this puzzle. However, I think the amount that I end up paying these sisters is going to end up <laughs> being close to that. <laughs> Maybe I'll make it back in the AdSense from this video. If anyone has any of those super rare editions that I mentioned earlier, of course I would be interested. However, I also now have a contact with a collector who has a much higher budget than I do. And so like this person is really going to make it worth your while. Like, please get in touch if you have any of those puzzles. All right. So, um, you know, I thought about not making this video until I had time to solve all three puzzles. However, Solving three solid colored puzzles is going to take a really long time, like hours and hours and hours. I literally leave for Spain in like five days. Um, I'm going to be at Worlds and then I'm going to be editing the videos about Worlds. And then I have a bunch of holiday content that's already planned out. So I probably won't be able to solve these puzzles until next year. But I was just like, don't be dumb. Like, don't wait on telling people about this really exciting puzzle find just because you don't have time. Like, not every video has to be this huge production, you know? So um, you can go watch my video about solid colored jigsaw puzzles for more information about this puzzle series. Um, let me know down in the comments if you are a collector, tell me what you collect and what was an item that you never thought you would get your hands on, but now you have one and it's like really special. Your code word for the comments will be bear. And that's all I've got. Um, stay tuned for my world's recap videos and I'll see you guys then.